What's going on guys? Andrew Pilikaki here back again with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Andre Kasha and this is going to be a continuation of the 2021-2022 Toronto Maple Leafs season previews for each individual player. Now this was one of the more interesting signings of the offseason. This was an acquisition that I thought was like, okay, this is one of those low risk high reward potential here or it could just be another guy that they signed that doesn't end up panning out and the injury troubles uh continue to happen so we'll get to that in a second but i'd like to ask you guys if you are new here to like this video and subscribe or just like the video and sub if you keep coming back i know there's a lot of people that watch these videos that aren't subscribed i'd really appreciate the support um yeah all the new subs all the people that have been here since day one Thank you so much, um, but we're going to get right into this. So like I did say, Andre Kasha, he is one of those guys that it kind of surprised me that the Leafs were going after him, but we'll get to more of that in his injury trouble. I have a little bit of the history pulled up later on, but uh, he's 25 years old, which is crazy. I feel like he's been in the league longer than that. I thought he was older, but um, six foot, 190 pound right winger. Um, the Leafs ended up signing him. Hold on, I was looking at his numbers earlier for $1.25 million. So technically, if the Leafs did want to bury him in the minors, if something does happen, um, you know, they can do that. They, that's a variable number, but they're probably going to be burying other contracts eventually. So that 1.25 more than likely will be on the Leafs uh, cap the whole time, unless somehow he got traded or anything like that. But that's getting too far ahead of ourselves. Kasha is a player that I've enjoyed watching when he's healthy. Now, the reason why I was a little bit surprised was because I knew the Leafs were looking for cheaper options that could fill out their lineup that had potential. This one to me seems like kind of a risk in terms of the 1.25 million that they spent. I know it's still low risk, high reward, like I just said, but I was surprised the Leafs were willing to take that shot on Andre Kasha. Now, if you were just told, oh yeah, he's going to be healthy all season, any team in the NHL is going to take that chance. But if he isn't, then it's a little bit of a risk. Because if Kasha's healthy, if you've seen him play before, he's got really good hands. Like Kasha's actually a really good hockey player. He's a former 20-goal scorer. Um, with the Ducks, he was really good when he was healthy. Again, that's going to be the theme of this video, when he was healthy. And I'm hoping the experienced Toronto Maple Leafs training staff, you know, they've done pretty well with other players before and rehabbing them and getting them back to where they need to be. I'm hoping that Kasha is a guy that can really take that and, and go to the next level because the Toronto Maple Leafs might have a little bit of, uh, you know, a bit of a, I don't know, diamond in the rough here because if he's healthy for the whole season, he can give you 20 goals. And I know people be like, oh, you know, he hasn't done that in a little while. No, this guy's a good hockey player. He's only 25. He's quick. He's got great hands. The great hands don't really go away. I mean, the guy can still put up numbers, I'm sure. And this is this is a, a signing that's very intriguing to me. So I do want to take a look at his numbers. And the reason why I'm telling you guys that he can put up numbers is because in, at the NHL level, of course, his rookie season, um, nothing too crazy there. But then the next year, 66 games played, 38 points. He had 20 goals. Now, the Leafs don't need him to have like 40, 50 points. But if he can give you 30 to 35 points, I mean, you're laughing. That's that's pretty good. 20 points in 30 games um, in 2018, 2019. 23 points in 49 games played. Like, these are decent numbers. Um, and then in Boston, the guy just couldn't stay healthy. I mean, four points in 11 playoff games um, in that 19-20 season. But the 2020-2021 season, three games, the guy really just, he can't stay healthy. And it's really unfortunate. But we're let, let's just take a look a little bit here. I don't know if this is his full detailed um, injury list. But as you can see from 2017 on to 2021, head, concussion, illness, shoulder, upper body, upper body, head, illness, undisclosed, upper body, upper body. And a lot of the time when they say upper body, it usually means concussion. Um, sometimes they don't always specify it to, uh, you know, keep the status of the player, um, which... And again, this is something that I think is is not the greatest, but sometimes teams will keep 
that that real injury away from the media so they don't keep spinning it um or it could like ruin the player's like reputation i guess which seems really stupid especially for something like a concussion but we've seen it in toronto where the leafs are like oh no it's just this it's not this and then all of a sudden you find out it's a terrible like injury later on it's happened all over the nhl not just you know obviously not just toronto other teams do it um, to to save the you know the media from going on an absolute tear on the player that uh, is being talked about but with Kasha I just thought of something while I was preparing this video because I was thinking about this earlier I was like where does he fit into this lineup and I'm like oh okay he'll be on like the third or fourth line and if he really torches it and stays healthy maybe he'll get some time on the second line even though he's predominantly a right winger I was like if the Leafs don't play him with the skilled players that usually, you know, don't face the physical third or fourth line, then why would the Leafs put him in a place that he could get hit more frequently? Unless he's very, like, unless the Leafs think he's healthy and they can stop these injuries from happening and they can put him in good spots, I don't know if it makes sense for Toronto to put him on a, a checking line or, you know, on a scrappier like fourth line or something like that, because the Leafs do have uh, a couple guys now that can at least throw hands or at least throw the body. You know, you got Simmons, you brought in Gabriel, um, you know, you have guys that are a little bit more physical. You have, you still have Muzzin who is not afraid to throw a big hit. Uh, guys like Dermot and Hall out front of the net are not soft by any means. They, they'll go out there and throw a few hits. Dermot's proven that he's gotten a lot tougher over the years. But it's like, why would why would Toronto bring in this guy to put him on a defensive-minded checking line or something like that? I think the Leafs truly want to see if he can bring that offensive spark um and if it's and if if that's the case then maybe toronto goes with more a more traditional like fourth line that like can play really well defensively but also hit um which could be the case you could see the leafs go with like a really skilled third line and try to go with like you know um kasha spezza and then whoever else like a, a kerfoot or you know maybe robertson gets an opportunity i don't know but maybe that's the route that they go um, it's it's there's a bunch of different possibilities, but for me, I'm looking at this and thinking, Kasha is a wild card for this team because if he actually does play really well, this is a very good signing. Like if you guys don't know Andre Kasha, if you've never really done research on him, if you've never watched any highlights, um, I do recommend going and watch his, watching some highlights. I'm sure there's a lot on there about like when he was in Anaheim. Obviously, none in Boston because he barely played. But if if you get the opportunity, he is only 25. There is there is a chance that he is healthy. I mean, he basically sat out the entire year this past year. If he went to a bunch of specialists, I'm sure the second he signed with Toronto, they probably invested in him already. Uh, if if you can get good hockey from Kasha, if you can get at least 70 to 80 percent of a season from Andre Kasha, you're going to get a good amount of points this guy is a good hockey player i i'm sick of seeing people saying this signing is terrible he's just you know whatever if he's hurt for the whole season fine it's it's not the best investment but you have to give the guy a chance first he he hasn't even put on the jersey yet you need to give this guy an opportunity the leafs are going to do everything they can to keep this guy healthy they're going to do everything they can to make sure he's on this team and if that's the case the depth just got much better on this team it got much better because this guy can give you 15 to 20 goals if he's healthy guaranteed money in the bank you have to just go watch some highlights he's got hands and he can shoot the the guy's a good hockey player and he's only 25 he's only 25 you have to give this guy a chance so I'm very excited to see what he can do. I'm excited to see if he will be able to stay healthy. I'm praying for him. And if, and if, you know, there's already people like knocking him and stuff. I'm thinking, man, shouldn't we be like cheering for this guy to stay healthy? Like if we're fans, like we should really be supporting this guy and be like, damn, like I need this guy to be healthy for this team this year because it only makes us better. So if you are new here, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Another preview uh, in the books. Uh, lots of videos coming up very soon because I have to because the season's coming up. So uh, I do appreciate you guys as always. Thank you for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video or stream. Peace.